This conference will now be recorded. Our scripture reading for Brother James at this time. Uh, today's scripture is taken from Luke uh, chapter 7, uh, verses 11 through 16. Uh, I'll be reading from the uh, King James Version. And it goes, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not and he came and touched the buyer and they that bear him stood still and he said young man i say unto you thee arise and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. May the Lord have mercy on the reading of his word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I believe we have prayer now. Oh, Father in heaven, we are thankful this morning again that we can turn to your word. We can come and worship with all your people around the world that is worshiping now. We ask, dear Father, that you would accept the homage that we give to you at this hour. And we pray, dear God, that you will speak to us abide with us strengthen our hearts dear lord to share jesus we give you thanks in jesus name amen amen good morning everyone god bless each and everyone it is good to see you guys again Today I'm going to try to be as short as possible. I, I I I did not realize it was going to be this hot, so I had to change one shirt, change another shirt, try to put on a different shirt. Where I am this morning, it is getting hotter and hotter. So um, so it's very interesting to 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 be with each and every one. I look forward that we can gather soon together. And um, that we can we can we can see each other face to face, even if we wear masks, you know, beloved. So today we 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 go to God's word, and it's taken from Luke chapter seven, verse eleven to sixteen that we have just heard read. And I'll try to try not to take Luke too long, so that we can um, we can be able to come back again and and have a study around um, four o'clock. So today we look at Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 16. The widow's son is the topic of my presentation this morning. And beloved, who has not seen a funeral? Who has not buried a friend? Who can easily lift his hat off his head as the mournful cottage pass and the funeral cars go by? Beloved, and not wonder when this will stop. But beloved, it is Jesus Christ alone who can lift the load of grief from the aching heart of the bereaved. It is Jesus Christ alone who can make the difference when pain comes and we see it and we, we are helpless, but thank God for him, he is the resurrection and the life. It is said that D.L. Modi used to say, Jesus spoiled every funeral when he went to a funeral. The darkest night of gloom he can turn into midday brightness. And thank God 
that the God that we serve is a God who can take darkness and turn it into light. We have here in Luke chapter 7, verse 11 and verse 16, we have an afflicted woman. She has a sorrowful past. She has a bitter present and she has a hopeless future. This woman, we look within the pages of scripture in Luke chapter 7, verse 12. It describes this woman and her sorrowful past. She was a widow. The scene of her husband deadbed, the heartbreaking rendering part in the mournful funeral and the dreaded loneliness that followed this woman when she lost her beloved, her, her loved one. She, the Bible says, was a widow. And not only that, in the time of Christ, woman did not work like how can woman work today. She had no savings like they had today, uh, a pension or 401k. Uh, she had not a social security check coming to her. In the time of Jesus, this woman certainly would have felt what it is like to, to know sorrow because her breadwinner, the one that loved her and she loved, her husband had passed away. She had a sorrowful past. She was called a widow. And you can imagine the keen edge of sorrow that she bore through her life. It may be that we have deep conviction of sin in the past. And, 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 and when pleasures of this world have, have come and we have savored it, but by and by we are wounded and we discover we have a past just like this woman, beloved. Only Jesus can take care of our past. This woman had a sorrowful past. Not only had she had a sorrowful past, but now in her life, she had a bitter present. Now she had a dead son and he was being carried out. Another season of trial had come again and the thick dark cloud of pain had overshadowed her sky and her world. And once more she faced death and she knew what sorrow was. Beloved, this lady not only had a sorrowful past, but she has now a bitter present. And not only did she experience a bitter present, she had a hopeless future. This was the funeral of the only son. This was the funeral where she saw her future being buried the name being lost, her support emotionally, her support financially, her support physically was being put to the grave. This woman had a sorrowful past, a bitter present and a hopeless future. And you could imagine that she too might have been ready to die. But beloved, when we have a a sorrowful past, a bitter present, and a hopeless future. We must remember that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and he is the life. And he is coming again in great glory. Oh, beloved, we have a mighty friend. You know, the old saying that goes, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And Jesus is that friend. The nearer she came to the grave, beloved, the nearer she came to eternal life. You could imagine on that street coming out of that city, two crowd met each other. And in that particular time of her darkest hour, at that darkest hour, she discovered it was her daybreak of her life. The sorrow that she endured turned into a morning of glory. It is the Bible that says that sorrow endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You know, war will reign for a season, but peace will come everlasting. There will be separation that will reign for a season, but there will be a union when Jesus come and we will be with him forever. We have a friend that is a mighty friend, not only a mighty friend, 
he is a loving friend jesus is the resurrection and he is the life ladies and gentlemen the bible says in verse 12 when the lord saw her he had compassion on her as soon as the lord saw her the love of his heart flow out to her although as yet she is a stranger to his sympathy he is no stranger to her sorrow in isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 and 4 it says jesus is a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow he knew her sorrow even though she did not know him surely the sting of human suffering is the unconsciousness of divine compassion soon as he saw her he loved her he had compassion on her oh ladies and gentlemen god still loves widows god still loves the fatherless god still loves the brokenhearted and pure religion and undefiled before God is to visit the widow and the fatherless. God still stands up for the disenfranchised. God still stands up for the brokenhearted. God still stands up for widows and those who are put down in society because he is a man of sorrows and acquainted with our grief. Jesus expresses sympathy today when it seems as though we have had a loss in our family. There are many people have gone by in this COVID-19 time. There are grandmothers and grandfathers who have died. There are mothers and fathers who have died. There are sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and friends and acquaintances, neighbors who have died. But Jesus reminds us, that he has compassion and one day he is coming again and he will burst the cloud and we shall see our loved ones again. We have sympathy because with Christ, he's a man of sorrows and he's acquainted with our grief. Surely he has borne our grief and carry our sorrow. He knows pain because he had endured it on Calvary's tree. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are reminded in COVID-19 2020 that god is a god who loves us and he takes care of us there are times we are afraid i know there are people who are afraid i know there are pastors who are afraid some are afraid to open the church some are afraid to have worship some are afraid to meet with the congregation ladies and gentlemen some are afraid to talk oh beloved today in spite of fear we have a friend who is close to us and he sympathize with us the bible says as he saw this woman he was moved with compassion and christ still have compassion to us while a hand of justice may move throughout this land his hands of mercy of grace and of love move within the world today to bring relief and comfort to those who moan and those who suffer so we have a friend, ladies and gentlemen. Not only that, but the Bible says, he said unto her, weep not. Inspiration says these unusual words of Christ, that Christ was unnoticed while the two company met and Christ went to, to this woman at her side and he spoke these simple words, weep not. Does she think these words spoken in mockery? Does he not know that what he's about to do? Yes, he does. He dries her tears and he bid them to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, he says to us, weep not. When it is all for us to weep and to cry and to, to wail and to give up, Jesus reminds us like this woman, weep not because he knows what he is going to do. When, a re, when we are reminded to make an alarm and, and, and to pull our sword and to fight, 
Jesus reminds us to weep not because he's going to fix everything. These are the words of Christ. Weep not. Don't give up as if all is lost. Don't weep as if there isn't a morning coming. Weep not because I'm going to take care of it. Weep not. In his word, he says, take no thought for your life, for what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or what you shall put on. Because God says, that's my responsibility. I will fix everything. Weep not. But not only that, in verse 14, ladies and gentlemen, in verse 14, there was a timely arrest. He touched the bureau. And they that bore him stood still. This was the arresting touch of the mercy that saves. A little while longer, and he would have been buried out of sight. Who shall arrest that soul which time, like dead cars, is carried off to the grave of eternal doom if Jesus is not met on the way? The Bible says not only did he tell her, weep not. But also, he touched the bearer and he arrests. He arrests the funeral service. He stopped the funeral service. It is the church, ladies and gentlemen, that must interrupt all funeral service when we are ready to cry, when it seems as though ill is done within society. It is the church that arrests us. The, the corruption and the injustice in this world. It is the church that speaks out and stop when bad things happen within our society. Just as Jesus stopped this funeral and arrest the beard, ladies and gentlemen, it is the church now that speaks up and arrest the ills that happen within our towns, in our cities and around the world. It is our church, ladies and gentlemen, that must say, when ills have taken place, the church must speak up. For when we live in a world where walls are built and people who are south of the borders are spoken of as all our rapists and murderers and drug, drug traffickers, when people are south of the border uh, have still their children taken away and parted and their children are stripped from their arms and they cannot see their little loved ones ladies and gentlemen it is the church that must speak out and say these things are wrong and if the church do not speak up then beloved i say i cannot breathe it is the church and when the church stays silent in the face of favoritism, when the church stays silent and uh, uh, in the in the face of favoritism, when when one when the church can say they favor one nation above every other nation in the Middle East, and they allow uh, a, a nation to displace people, and they will not stand up for the people in other nation and allow one nation to trample another nation, and the church will not speak up. Then my words is that I cannot read, ladies and gentlemen, when the church stays silent in the face of atrocities against people, I cannot read. When the church stays silent in the presence of people, when people call other people from different countries and tell them that your country is a S-H-I-T hole, ladies and gentlemen, and your country is such a, a place, and the church stays silent, I cannot read. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, when coronavirus shows its ugly head in Wuhan, and the virus went around the world and many people die. And yet for generations of people in this country who came and built the railroad and, and they are slapped on the street because of the virus and they find no identity in this country and the church stays silent. Then my word is like George word i cannot read ladies and gentlemen it is a church that arrests the corruption in society because the church is the salt 
of the earth. The church is the light of the world. Beloved, when a man's color is weaponized against him only because he has a little bit of melanin more in his skin tone and his hue is a little bit darker than another and the church stays silent and will not arrest this problem and would stay silent and says nothing, then I cannot breathe. When the church stays silent, when its citizens of a country are made its enemies and guns are called out to shoot down their people and the church stays silent, when young people of 18 years old, 20 years old, stands up and speak up because the church is silent and these young people becomes the rock that cries out and the church stays silent in the face of injustice and others must stand up. Then my word are the words of George. I cannot breathe. It is the church, beloved, that stops the corruption in society. It is a church that speaks up. Jesus, when he met the bearers, he stopped them. He touched them and he stopped them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a church that says stop. It is the church that interrupts the sadness of the funeral. Why? Because of Jesus. It is a church that shows that Jesus still is the resurrection and the life. It is a church that addresses the grief of the broken heart. It is the church that addresses the, the sorrow that the world faces. It is the church that sees injustice and cry down for justice within its land. And when the church stays silent, I cannot breathe. Yes, beloved, it is the church that must say there is a better day coming. And not within this world, but it's when Jesus that burst the eastern sky because Jesus is coming again. It is the church that must proclaim the three angels' message, which the gospel is at the front of it. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has a message, but when the church stays silent, I can agree, ladies and gentlemen. It is the church that stops every bad funeral for all are bad. It is the church that gives hope. And when the church failed to give hope, I can agree. Beloved ladies and gentlemen, Jesus interrupts all funeral. Jesus arrests the ills of society. So today, ladies and gentlemen, when the church stays silent and we stay quiet, our words are the words of George. I cannot breathe. But beloved, the Bible says in verse 14 that Jesus gave a strange command. And he says, after he had stopped the funeral, he touched the bearer. That was a strange thing. You were not supposed to touch the untouchable, but Jesus did. When men were leprous, he touched them. When men were sick, he touched them. And Jesus still has a touch for us to raise us up. And while he touched, he gave this command, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Who is this that command the dead to rise up? This is he who speak as one having authority. As the coming of the light commands the darkness to vanish. He does with his word. He says, rise up, because he has power to raise the dead. Beloved ladies and gentlemen, when it seems as though all is lost, Jesus still has the authority to raise the dead. Are you suppressed in depression today? And Jesus says, rise up. Are you filled with anxiety? He says, rise up. Do you feel lost in a world that seems so great and so big and 
you can't have a job after graduation and you seem as though that the debt grows higher and the money is smaller medication gets more expensive the grocery bill gets longer and you don't know where to turn jesus says rise up he is the one that gives release and relief to depression to a spirit that feels lost to a heart that is broken in 2020 jesus says rise up do you feel lost today without a friend without a hope jesus says rise up and when it seems as though the world is against you he says with his help to rise up you know it is maya angelo who penned these words i rise maya angelo says you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies you may trod me in the very dirt but still like dirt and dust i rise just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides still i rise you may shoot me with your words you may cut me with your eyes and lies you may kill me with your hatred but still like air i rise leaving behind night of terror and fear i rise bringing the gift that my ancestors give i am the dream and the hope of the slave i rise i rise i rise beloved despite all black or white asian or spanish native american pretty or plain thin or fat vowed or celebrated we rise we must rise and this is a command of christ it seems as a strange word but when he stopped the funeral his command to the young man was arise the bible says he arose and he united son with mother and mother with son ladies and gentlemen there are times when my family we have what is called family day and we haven't had one in a while but when we do have a a family reunion we are happy to see each and every one cousins from different parts of the united states family from different parts of the world ladies and gentlemen because when we see each other it's a day of unity it's a day of togetherness it's a day of joy jesus united a mother with her son he said to the young man arise he wants us not to stay in pain and in suffering but to remind us and he reminds us that he's coming again and there was a wonderful change the bible says he that was dead sat up and began to speak an example of one begotten again by the word of god what a change is life what a change is life given silence now a glow with warmth and his body change when jesus changed us he resurrect us to a new life from a sinner to a saint from death to life from being lost to being found he changes our life and this young man who was dead now lives oh today ladies and gentlemen jesus yes is the resurrection and the life and in a time when it seems as though so many bad things has happened he reminds us beloved this morning that he will change everything that he will take responsibility for it and he is the only one that can fix it and there was a happy deliverance he delivered him to his mother 
or praise him for his tenderness. He not only saved the son from death, but deliver him from the grave to the comforting of the broken-hearted widow. She could truly say, this my son was dead and is alive again. A foretaste of heaven's united fellowship and joy she had experienced. Death has been conquered and loved ones met each other again in the presence of the living son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a happy reunion on Resurrection Day. You know, it is this week that I learned that one of my former treasurers had died. And then a few days before, I learned that one of the favorite professors, Dr. Wiggins, had died. And then his wife had died earlier, some time gone. And then a week after that, I learned that one of my other professor, and George King, Dr. King, his wife had also died. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, one day there will be a reunion. Jesus is coming again. Oh, I look for that day when there shall be no more fear and we shall glory with him. Beloved, the widowed son was resurrected and we have a hope today. In spite when people may weaponize us against each other, let us not stay silent. But let us cry out, one day, God's church will be the church under fire. One day, God's people will be the people to be persecuted. One day, God's church will be put in prison. We'll have to do prison ministry. One day. But beloved, until then, may we cry out that Jesus is coming again. May we give a hope that there is a soon return of our Savior. May we share that hope from every hill to every valley that Jesus is coming again. May God bless us and may we rise to tell that we have a Savior. His name is Jesus and he loves us and he's coming in glory and he's coming in power and he has all power to give. Oh, beloved, I look forward to see Christ. I look forward to meet him again, to meet him in person, I should say. Meet him and see him face to face. I want to meet Christ. I want to see him, beloved. I want to walk through those pearly gates. And I want to meet people that I've never met in my life. Oh, beloved, let us rise and let us speak and tell others that we serve a risen Savior. And he's coming back in glory. Oh, beloved, may God bless us this morning. May we be reminded that he's a God who never give up on us. May God keep us. Beloved, may we bow our heads as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we come and we ask you, dear Father, that you will buoy our heart up. Remind us you will fix everything soon. Remind us, dear God, that there is a message to preach. It is the gospel, the three angels message. Give us courage to speak your message. It's an inclusive message for red or yellow, black or white. Give us the courage there, Father, not to keep silent, but to speak up and to remind the world that God is a God that is true to his word and he is coming again and he's going to fix everything. Oh, beloved, remind us, dear God, that there are not many races on this earth, but there is only one race, the human race. And we have an enemy. It is the devil. And he tries to divide us. Help us, dear God, to find wisdom. Help us, dear God, to see what is truth. And help us to share it, dear God, that someone's heart will change. And one day, when we meet Jesus face to face, oh, we shall say, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. He who have died on the cross, he who took the nails in his hands, he who is resurrected and lived forever, worthy is the Lamb. May God bless us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Our closing hymn will be 251. He lives. 251.
I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever man may be. His hand of mercy, his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always his name. He lives. He lives. He that lives today. Oh, he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. Live salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Verse 2, Brother Dan, take it away. It mutes all the time. I can't make it stay off it. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart, though, though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is, oh boy. This all the stormy blast, the day of his appearing will come at last. He lives. He lives. Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me. A long life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Oh, rejoice, rejoice, O oh, Christian, lift up your voice and sing, eternal hallelujah, to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find None other is so loving, so good, and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Oh, he walks with me and talks with me. Oh, no, 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 no. He lives, he lives, salvation to heart. You and me, how I know he lives, he lives within in my heart. My heart. That's good. Amen. Amen. Do we have the benediction of this time? Amen. <laughs> Our heads are bowed. Uh, as we pray, our Father in heaven, thank you for being in our hearts. Thank you for being alive forevermore. Lord, we give you thanks. One day, 
we will share eternal life with you. Thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Is within my heart. Oh, my friends, shalom, my friends, shalom, Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Did I hear a sister? So Shirley, happy Sabbath. Sabbath, Brian, happy Sabbath. Sister Henry, happy Sabbath. Henry, sister Henry. Henry. Happy Sabbath, sister Henry. Wear some, big up, come on. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Hey, so Louis, let's put a talk. Put a talk, man. I see everybody. Come on. Come on. You know. Come on. 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 Come on.